Hello, I'm here with super soprano Mary Bevan and uber pianist Charles Owen, who feature in Second Home on my new Heartfelt album. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> How lovely to Thanks see you. Thanks for that nice you. intro. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pleasure. Can I first ask, um, let's start with Charles. What's your connection with the Sacconi Quartet? Uh, well, I met three of them at um, the International Musicians Seminar at Prussia Cove. Wow, two must be a decade ago now. And then they asked me if I would record Jonathan Dove's piano quintet, also for Signum. And we did that four years ago. And that was the most thrilling experience. Um, and then the request to take part in your beautiful piece, Second Home, came in. And then I said, yes, so that's my connection. Great, great. And Mary, did you have a previous connection with them? Well, I've known Cara, the cellist. I've known her for really quite a long time. Her husband, in fact, um, was taught by my dad at school, mm. um, Chris Bucknell. So I've sort of known Cara through, through Chris, her husband. And then, yeah, I, I've worked with them, I think, a couple of times. And, but, but mainly, I think this, this is the most recent and, and substantial piece of work I've done with them. But yeah, they're amazing. They're, they're lovely people as well. They are. And that's so important, especially in an environment like a recording session where you've got this sort of big timer hanging over you and um, you haven't got a lot of time and, and things can sometimes get a bit stressful. It makes all the difference, doesn't it, to have these wonderful people keeping lovely and calm. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. They're great. They're great. Yes. So, Second Home actually started off being um, a solo piano piece, which I keep on meaning to send you, Charles, and I, I must do that. I look forward to it. <laughs> and, um, and I was asked to make this version for Piano Quintet with um, Soprano. And it's based, it's basically theme of variations. And the theme is this very obscure Polish folk song, which I love. And it's about a little violet in the forest at night. And um, and the song asks the violet, why are you so small? And the violet says, well, I don't get enough sun rays coming through all the leaves and the foliage to make me grow. And so there are moments in this piece where um, it's very intimate and very quiet. You can just sense that that feeling in the dusk in the in the forest. And Mary. Um, you don't even have the words very much, do you? You you have to hum. Yeah, humming, um, it's difficult to hum. I mean, it's surprisingly difficult. But um, yeah, it starts off in that in that low, sort of quite middle of the voice hum. And it is that vulnerability that I think you wanted, um, you know, to start with a full voice, but maybe be not, um, you wouldn't paint that picture of that delicate, vulnerable flower. Exactly. So yeah, it starts in that really lovely way. And then it goes into the, to the folk song with, the, the Polish words. <laughs> not, it's not the first time I've made you sing in Polish, is it? <laughs> no, this one was much easier, but um, yeah, so so Rox has made me sing in Polish twice now, Charles. It's, uh, it's actually really lovely language to sing in. I mean, it, mm. it takes a while to pick it up, but mm. then once you're in, in that mode, then I don't know, it's, it's quite rich. It's mm. rich, certainly sounding and Oh, it's, it's, I, know, it, I, I do really like it and I, I'm not sure I'll ever get a chance to sing Polish other than singing your music, not so <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm so glad to hear that because um, when I was, so you um, sung in the world premiere and the UK premiere of my um, oratorio Faithful Journey, A Mass for Poland. And um, when I was talking with the commissioners about um, whether we should set the, the poems in English or Polish, they said, and I've heard this often said, they, they would go, oh no, it's so difficult to sing in Polish and it's not an easy language to sing in. Um, so I'm particularly pleased to hear that from you, Mary. Thank you. And I, I will tell them whenever they bring that up again. <laughs> I find it easier than, than Russian, which I guess is a comparable language um to sing in I, I don't know I, I I do find it slightly easier than that but you in the faithful journey you set it English and Polish as well so there wasn't always an there is an option I guess yeah. to but it's it's nice to have both I think it's lovely to have both and then it sort of reflects you and your your dual nationality thing that yeah, yeah often comes out in your work yeah 
And it's very important that that um, dual nationality, especially these days. Um, and Charles, um, in some of your moments, um, I sort of flip flip the the table, as it were, in that um, people often expect the piano to be accompanying something that other instruments are doing. But in several places, you have just a melody on its own, just in one hand, mm. and and Mary, or the um, in a in a wordless way, or the strings that are accompanying you, mm -hmm. is that something that often happens? In, in other composers' piano quintets, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, there are quite a few examples. I'm thinking of, for example, in the Vorjak uh, piano qu quintet in the slow movement, there are places where the, the piano is definitely accompanying and supporting the strings, and then Vorjak turns that round totally. And um, I love that sort of democratic feeling. Uh, Brahms does the same Schumann, there are, you know, moments where you are very much a supporting role, and then the piano takes over the story. And I know the place in Second Home you're referring to, it's one of my absolute favorite placed it in the whole piece also because there's a kind of stillness um, in the quartet they have this slow crotchets pulsing underneath and the piano writing is quite high up and it almost sounds like bird song to my ear at that point so we're in the forest and the violet is somewhere growing tentatively and then it's, it's like you've created bird song that's how i imagine it it's a joy to play Oh, thank you. Well, you do it so beautifully, and and yes, it is meant to be bird song, and it's it's very ethereal the way you do that. It's gorgeous. But the other thing that I do that I think is very cruel is that um I make you do some very very fast semi quavers in your left hands, oh. less than a full octave in sevenths. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. Is that, that hard? Yes. The, there is the thing about this piece, which I love, is that we've kind of time slows right down. Most of it is in the heartbeat is quite slow, and then all of a sudden, you literally throw us and the quartet into some very complex rhythmical writing in terms of i think i have seven against is it five in the left hand also? You have yeah. something like that there's some difficult synchronization and um, my right hand has to be with the upper strings and the left with the lower so you can imagine how we rehearsed that so that with the two hands were and it was one of those places i saw we slightly struggled at first and then it just clicked um but yes the seventh so a little bit mean but i promise they're there i played them they're on the recording you did, I'm so glad I wasn't singing in that bit. You remember it, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I got the easy stuff. <laughs> I did actually wonder at one point when I was writing it whether I should do something, but I just felt um, I, I couldn't think of anything that wouldn't have been sort of unnatural and, and it wouldn't have sounded organic. I, I just thought probably best not. Mm, yeah. But, <laughs> both do it absolutely beautifully so thank you very much and um and what are your plans mary what's what's next for you well i've just got back from copenhagen yesterday um so i've just been doing bark there for six weeks and i'm going to the bolshoi in three weeks to do aria dante there so um and in that in this three-week period i've got obviously quarantine first and then i'm doing a messiah at the albert hall Wow. With audience of 800, but no <laughs> orchestra, just a, just the organ, which could be quite interesting if I'm standing really far away from him. Um, and then a Wigmore Hall concert with Kaleidoscope. We're doing the 120th centenary celebrations for the Wigmore and the reopening of the Wigmore. We're doing for a um, La Bonne Chanson, which I'm so excited. Another quartet, uh, piano quintet. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, and and learning this role for for Russia, so that's my next a month sorted. Yeah, oh, lovely. How nice lovely. to work yeah. again. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Charles? Um, well, the, the next imminent concerts are um, Chopin's second concerto, um, and that's with um, orchestra based in the West Midlands, Orchestra of the Swan. And Michael Collins is putting down his clarinet and conducting, and it's two performances per night. So you, it's great. You do Chopin's second concerto, and then an hour and a half later, you do it again. So that's, that's one of the new normals. Um, and I'm getting re ready for my 50th birthday concert at Wigmore Hall. 
Um, that is Schumann, uh, sorry, not Schumann, sorry, wrong composer, Chopin, Debussy, Ravel, Messiaen, and Liszt. And I'm going to be joined on stage by Simon Callow, who's going to be reading poetry, which inspired pieces like Ravel's Gaspard La Nuit and also other poems. Um, and then off to Verbier Festival with Augustine Haderlich, fantastic violinist and the last time we played together was um, actually it was Grammy nominated album called Bohemian Tales. So that's Jana Czech, Beethoven. And, um, wow, well, well like, yeah. it's, it's so fantastic that you're both so busy and things are taking off again. It just, mm -hmm. it just reminds me how lucky I am to have had both of you simultaneously in a recording session last March in London. So thank you very much. And it's really Thank lovely you. to see you. Take care. You too. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Fox. Bye. Bye.